on the other side. Hi. Perfect. That'll work. Good you to see everybody. You. One yep. second. I think so. All right. I think we're there. So, Joelle, you want to do roll call? I believe we have to wait, wait for uh, Chair Edwards to call the meeting. Okay. To call order. order. Yeah. Right. All right. We're going to call the order of the Water Supply Planning Committee meeting of the Monterey Peninsula Water Management District for Monday, October the 3rd, 2022. And the time is 3.02. Um, roll call, please. Committee Member Paul. Here. Committee member Riley. Here. Chair Edwards. Here. All committee members are present. All right, thank you. Next order is um, comments from the public. The public may comment on any items within the district jur jur jurisdiction. Please limit your comments to three minutes. Open up public comment there, Joel. Thank you. All right, and at this time, I would like to invite uh, MCAR. MCAR, when you're ready, please present your comment. Thank you, Joel. This is Adam Pinteritz, Government and Community Affairs Director for the Monterey County Association of Realtors. I, uh, I probably, this is probably redundant, but uh, I just want to reiterate or, or review the primary function of this committee. Um, which is to facilitate water supply project planning to benefit the Monterey Peninsula area. This effort shall include subpotable water, purified recycled water, gray water, aquifer storage and recovery, seawater desalination, groundwater replenishment, and other water supply alternatives that may be proposed in the future. Given the objective to uh, identify and, and support water supply projects, uh, I, I have to ob uh, object to the agenda item number three uh, to oppose a desalination plant. This is a, uh, a potential source of new water. And regardless of any political opinions on the matter, should this committee not be concerned with uh, considering potential water sources that, uh, that seem quite clearly necessary, particularly in the lens of uh, the need for new housing and the thousands of units of new housing units that will be needed over the next decade uh, as per the RENA numbers. Um, so given uh, all that context, it seems uh, just plain inappropriate of me for, from my perspective uh, to be considering opposition to a project, uh, um, you know, based purely on political reasons. Thank you for your time and uh, I appreciate your uh, consideration. Chair Edwards, I see no one else with their hands raised, so I'll return this back to the committee. All right, thank you. Um, next item um, would be action items. What's that first one there, General Manager? Yeah, the first one is approval of minutes of the uh, previous two meetings in June and in August. All right, any question from the board on, on the minutes? No. Okay, uh, uh, Joel, let's take it to the public. Ask any questions on the minutes? Yes, if you would like to make public comment on item number one, please raise your hand. Or if you're calling in, push star nine. Chair Edwards, I see no one with their hands raised, so I'll return this back to the committee. Thank you. Can I have a motion and a second? I so move. I second. We have a motion uh, discussion. If no discussion, roll call vote, please. Committee member Paw. Yes. Committee member Riley. Aye. Chair Edwards. Yes. The motion is adopted. Thank you. Next item, GM. Yeah, this next item uh, will be briefed by Maureen Hamilton, our district engineer. Thank you. I'm here to request that the committee recommend that the board adopt a resolution authorizing the general manager to apply for and enter into grant agreements for the implement, or excuse me, for the integrated regional water management implementation round two grant. In addition to that request, I'd like 
I'm asking the committee to recommend to the board to authorize the general manager to enter in to a contract for grant administration services that would be wholly reimbursed by the grant in an amount not to exceed 148,000. I don't believe we'll order that. Um, both the grant agreement and the administration contract have been budgeted. MPWMD is the designated lead to apply for IRWM grants with our Monterey Peninsula Regional Water Management Group. The Regional Water Management Group issued a call for projects early this summer, and we performed local competitive ranking in August. The, the grant ranking, or excuse me, the application ranking process is done now more at the local level than at the DWR level, um, making the grant process a lot more streamlined. Um, the Regional Water Management Group voted on September 21st to put in applications for Monterey County's Carmel River floodplain restoration and environmental enhancement project, otherwise known uh, as Carmel River Free. And that amount will be just a bit over 800,000. And in addition to uh, include an application for the city of Monterey, Olivier Street stormwater diversion project that project has also been called the Lighthouse Tunnel Diversion Project or the Tunnel Diversion Project in the other documents. And what that does is it brings dry weather flows that would normally uh, get discharged to the Monterey Bay untreated. It transfers them to the stormwater sewer and sends it to Monterey One Water for treatment and conversion to pure water Monterey water during a season when source water, uh, additional source water can definitely be used in the dry weather season. And the city of Monterey requested 500,000 for that grant application. Are there any questions I can answer? Uh, any questions for board member? Director Rowley. Um, a, a couple of questions. Uh, before I was elected to this board, I went to a couple of early meetings of the, um, IRWMP, if I, if I have that right. Uh, it seemed to me there were 25 or so people sitting around a room and this, that was a large group. I was really impressed about the, the, the number of different agencies that were engaged in that process. But um, that's, and so I don't know if you, I don't know if the regional water management group, the, 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 another you know name, uh, is that a different composition than the RWMP planning group? It's the same comp uh, composition. When the IRWM plan was being written, membership at that time was, I believe, eight members. And boy, I, I wouldn't bet lunch money on that number. During the IRWM plan update, which was finalized in 2019, and this next round of implementation grants, our membership is now 16. We're not necessarily getting the turnout that we did when you were looking at the IRWM plan revision, um, but the regional water management group membership is definitely there. And I have wondered if the Zoom has resulted in a lower participation rate, or maybe if folks weren't putting money in or putting applications in for grant monies that they weren't necessarily attending the grant meetings. So long-winded answer to yes. Okay, and it, there were just some different initials and some different words, and I didn't know to what extent it was new or an overlap, but it's really a component of the original large group. I, I, I guess that's what I'm hearing you say. Oh, I was just curious about that structure. Thank you. Uh, Director Paul, any? Yes, a couple of questions. So is is this the first uh, project to direct stormwater in the city of Monterey into the recycled water, or is there already some of that happening? Is yeah, so we did a, a test project uh, for Lake Elestero flows. And so uh, the lake is a stormwater management lake. So prior to a rain event, they'll drain the lake out to the ocean and then allow it to refill during the, uh, the rain event. And the sewer interceptor 
goes right past the gates of the of Lake Alistero. So we tested that as proof of principle with a about a 20 foot connection, um, but it was not made permanent, so it's still kind of sitting out there. Um, there is a dry weather flows project in the city of PG that currently sends uh, dry weather flows to Pure Water Monterey or to the uh, the regional wastewater plant. So very similar, but this would be the first sit in the city of Monterey. Hmm. Oh, and you know, dry weather flows are just basically, uh, it can be any combination of things, but it's it's typically springs and late season runoff that's just working its way through the the system uh, into little creek beds and so forth and may pick up uh, you know a little boost from irrigation leaks that are gone going undetected and so forth but um, it's a, a known identified uh, flow of water uh, you know although small um, that's out there in the in the dry weather months good oh, very Worth supporting. Uh, my only other question is um, the the uh, administration cost. Is that a, a usual percentage to uh, to allow up to ten percent of the grant funds for administrative costs? It has been on these Proposition One grants. The grant we're administering right now, the implementation round one, we're not close to using that amount of money so i imagine i will ask for substantially less after working the budget based on this round thank you <clears throat> that's all for uh, me director Raleigh, you had your hand up yeah i have another question about the carmel area wastewater uh plant where where's the demarcation the, the difference between where they get their water and where uh, monterey one gets its water is it all of the city of pg is that the kind of the cutoff could, could you say that one more time the wh wh where does the wastewater go wh when it goes to Carmel area wastewater compared yeah. to one every one? Yep. Yes, Carmel uh, area wastewater is all city of Carmel, a little bit of the valley, but they haven't, um, you know, fully annexed up the valley and uh, Pebble Beach. And then there's a little stub of Pacific Grove right next to Pebble Beach that I believe is in that um, that's being sent to COD. Um, so kind of around the, the little panhandle um, at the edge of the Defense Language Institute off of uh, Forest Avenue going up the hill or the, the Holman Highway going up the hill, um, that little piece of PG, I believe, is connected. And also where the um, uh, old Mission Linen uh, services. I believe that also goes to COD. And uh, are, are they maximizing, uh, like we are trying to do a stormwater addition to the wastewater, you know, the stream going forward, are they maximizing uh, the same way we're, we're seeing it here? Yeah, so um, they have added two dry water, the dry weather flow uh, outfalls so that um, one of them is through the 18th fairway at Pebble Beach. And then there's another one, it's a storm drain uh, kind of behind the 18th green um, along the, the hotel line. So it's, it's too Pebble Beach oriented. Um, the city of Carmel has not yet gotten on that bandwagon. Uh, and there is you know, quite a bit of stormwater that gets discharged to the to Carmel Beach in the winter, uh, less so in the summer. But we've seen along the Fourth Avenue drainage in Carmel, we've seen uh, you know almost year-round flows from time to time. So that that one's been overlooked. Um, but Pebble Beach sits there on what's called an ASBS, which is an area of special biological significance. And so Pacific Grove. Um, and to, to an extent, the Cannery Row area of Monterey are required to reduce their both wet weather and dry weather flows into the bay, uh, as has Pebble Beach. I think this one that they're asking for is technically not in the ASBS. I don't know, Maureen, do you know the answer to that one? I don't believe it is. It discharges right by the tunnel uh, where the 
piers are. Yeah, it's kind of like Coast Guard Pier. But um, Hartnell Creek, which is right there kind of by the Trader Joe's, um, in between Parker Lusseau by the post office in Monterey, uh, then runs up kind of behind the library. So you can see this little valley uh, creek bed. Uh, that's that's where there's a lot of um, dry weather flow, believe it or not, that just continues to happen. And then in wetter weather, uh, kind of on the shoulder area, if you were to go by the old hospital um, near where Heirloom Pizza is in Monterey, so right at the corner of Hartnell and Cass, you can actually look at the curbing and there are a series of maybe four or five uh, small diameter, you know, like two inch diameter holes cut into the curbing because they would get a consistent flow in many months when it's not raining, nothing's happening, but it was coming out and originally going up over the sidewalk and over the curb into the street. So now they've cut these holes in it. So it goes across Hartnell and finds a storm drain. It goes into the storm drain. And I clearly have spent way too much time in my job at this point. Do that. <laughs> <laughs> but um but yeah, sorry i just, asked no but there's just there are these little places all through the peninsula that you know have some flows any other questions uh just a couple from me um did we take this out to the whole um peninsula ask anybody want in on this or or did we make sure that we asked? That's one question. Yes, sir, we did. I sent out an uh, email to all of the regional water management group stakeholders, absolutely. Okay, and we didn't get, this is what we got back. This is what we got back. Okay, as long as they had a chance. Um, is None of this is carryover, right? This is completely new, a Correct. new grant. Okay, yep. and no other questions from the board, I mean, from the committee. Uh, Joel, will you open it up to the public? Yes, so if you would like to make public comment on item number uh, two, please raise your hand, or if you're calling in, uh, push star nine. Chair Edwards, I see no raised hands. Okay, can we have a motion and a second? So move. A second. Okay, any other, any other discussions? Because we delayed that. <laughs> Anybody got any second thoughts? Okay, if none, roll call vote, please. Committee member Riley? Aye. Committee member Pa? Yes. Chair Edwards? Yes. The motion is adopted. I just want to add, if I can, Dave and your staff, I'm just so glad you're pushing the planning process and are in the position you are to help integrate what other thoughts are and bring it together for grant applications. I just think it's a great service we do for our neighbors and what we do as a district. And I'm just so pleased to see that. And I just wanted to say that. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Dan. I agree hundred percent. Me too. All right, general manager, um, item number three. Yes, so item number three is a, um, I guess a discussion possibly leading to action. Um, our public speaker at the outset of the meeting did speak to this uh, in general terms. Um, I should point out that in um, June, June 15th of 2020, the board did adopt a position opposing DSAL in a letter sent to the Coastal Commission and supporting uh, Pure water expansion at that time, and um, that was done at a, at the board full board meeting in a vote of four to three. So the district is on the record as uh, formally supporting pure water expansion and opposing uh, the desal plant. But the additional question has come up as to whether we have any regulatory authority to uh, not approve. Uh, the desal plant uh, as the district, and that would likely be uh, incorporated into the necessary amendment to the Calam water distribution system permit. Uh, our 
District Counsel Dave Laredo and I had a brief discussion about this. I don't know if you were prepared to add anything, Dave. I think my opinion was that we'd get out trumped by uh, Public Utilities Commission saying state trumps local, but uh, don't really know. Mr. Laredo, you on mute. Thank you. It's a bit more nuanced than that. Our authority is under our enabling statute, which is legislative. It is the state providing the direction to us. And certainly section 363 says that any additions, expansions, extensions, expansions of a distribution system does require a permit from the district. And that would include sources of supply, even though that is imported water from outside of the area, outside of our area. So I believe that we arguably will have a role in issuing a permit. And if you're going to issue a permit, you can take into consideration all relevant factors. I thank you. Not expect Cal-Am to stand down easily on that, but I believe that it's a position that could be enunciated. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Laredo, General Manager. And any questions from the directors right now? Go ahead, Director Rowley. Director Paul. Yeah, this is an interesting position to clarify or to take or whatever. I don't see the inconsistency of supporting one project, which is Monterey One and all the recycled water. I don't see any inconsistency of supporting one side of the supply and opposing another alternative supply that is in competition with and is less desirable than and is more expensive than the recycled water. I don't see any inconsistency of supporting one and then being on record saying, and we oppose the other. And so I think it's, you know, to leave to leave that in, I don't know, it's not limbo, but without a clearly definite statement, it's clear where we stand. I mean, that's in the position we've taken and the financing we put forward and the cooperation we put and the shared effort with Monterey One, it's just clear where we stand. And I don't see any problem with clarifying the negative. Director Paul, go ahead. But I agree for the simple reason that water supply planning involves, among other things, figuring out what are the preferred solution, what are the options, what are the preferred solutions, what are the best solutions in terms of environment, cost, and all the other uh, considerations. So it makes sense to to uh, to know what the options are and to take you know if there's one that we think is is uh, preferable for lots of reasons to take a position on that um, even if we don't have the even if we don't have the permitting authority. Um, and then there's just besides that comment, um, I just want to be absolutely clear that everyone is clear that what what we're discussing is not desal in general, but this particular desal proposal that's going once again to the Coastal Commission uh, soon. So um, this particular Calam's you know proposal that is trying to get a coastal permit for that's and we're not talking about desal in general. I just don't want there to, I just want that to be absolutely clear, whatever we decide to do. Okay, uh, General Manager, how long would it take you to put together a report of denial under that, what we've been talking about? Yeah, I'll have to confer with Dave Laredo, but um, yeah, I, I think there's two things uh, at play. You know, I mentioned uh, the position we took with the Coastal Commission in June of 2020. You may recall that in December of 2020, um, we brought a much more direct uh, request. I believe the, the it was consider development of a board position on California American Water application to the California Coastal Commission for a coastal development permit slash Monterey Peninsula Water Supply Project. At that time, uh, Director Evans motion that it be deferred until uh, February of 2021. 
And then I believe in February of 2021, the board did adopt a position of opposition to the application. So again, just a position of opposition. I think it's the record's pretty clear that the district has in fact opposed the desal plant in favor of pure water expansion simply because the, the rate payer impacts are more fair and it's more right sized and generally uh, less expensive. Um, so all of that being said, what I hear is being asked now would be to develop a uh, a regulatory denial. Uh, That's right. Yeah, so I'll, you know, I'll put my head together with uh, Dave Laredo, but I think we could probably get that onto the October board meeting agenda. Okay. Um, any other questions from board members before we open that up, up to the public? I do have another question. It, uh, it was a re after reading the minutes and there was some reference, I'm gonna look for it right this minute. Um, there was a reference to uh, the PUC process. And, uh, and th th so my, my, I, I have a two, two prong question here. One is, uh, does this have anything to do with the PUC process? <clears throat> I would say more related to the Coastal Commission process. Um, you know, I, I think we're all still reading the decision that came out last Friday, but, you know, it, it does appear to be moving pure water expansion forward. Uh, we don't have any guarantee yet that CalAM would not attempt to step away from its MOU, its commitment to sign the purchase agreement. You know, I think that there's some reading between the lines on whether the cost recovery that they requested has been granted. Um, there's still a couple more little follow-up things we need to do about how they've phrased statements about extraction well number one and two and some follow-up feelings because you can't build a project without the extraction wells. And so it'd be foolhardy to go ahead with going out to bid if it wasn't super clear that extraction wells one and two were on the same schedule. And we have to um, keep in mind where the PUC is in this process. This is a proposed decision. Right. There can be comments on the proposed decision. There, the uh, commissioner could, uh, could have an alternate proposed decision. And, and finally, this goes to the commission as a whole, and they could substitute their own judgment in terms of how they write or modify this decision. So I, I, it's premature to read these words as gospel. It certainly is where we are at this stage of the process, but this could change, and it could change in minor ways. It could change in significant ways before in terms of where we're going. Uh, this is at the moment, the earliest this would be considered would be on November 3rd. And if there is much uh, maneuvering, either behind the scenes or otherwise, it would lapse into December. Yep. And and my, my second question, uh, which also came from the minutes <laughs> as a reminder, um, there was some comment about uh, phase one, phase two, and phase three. There was a reference to phase three. I know phase two is the supply uh, numbers, uh, demand numbers, I mean. Uh, but phase three, there is no phase three. What could possibly be a phase three? Is, is there some possibility out there? Is there anything that you can speculate on? I, I know there's only one and two. I'm just thinking of how many ways this can be dragged out at the PUC. <laughs> uh, 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 Mr. Laredo, you're smiling. You, you want to take that one on? Yeah, phase you? three is in the eye of the beholder, quite frankly. <laughs> it's it's, it's any, anything that has been left unresolved in phase two. Uh, it, it certainly, it, each of the parties may have a perspective that, it, that phase two does not nail it in its entirety. Fair enough, and I, I and that that that's enough clarification for me. So, <laughs> and Mr. Laredo, are we going to get a decision out of phase two? Oh, that, that, yeah, yeah, yes, there will be a decision. That's where we're leading uh, uh, leading towards. But uh, phase two is to look at uh, uh, sources of supply and demand, and and to uh, determine what that demand is. Okay, and um. And the, the and and the the evidence is all before the ALJ. 
uh, but for the cross-examination and the briefing. And we're in, in the last stages of determining what that schedule will be. Uh, we have a, a, a report due to the ALJ this uh, Thursday, which is to propose what the remaining schedule will be. And uh, at the moment, the preferred dates are all in October and possibly into November. I anticipate that those dates will slip a bit because it's the same ALJ that's going to be considering all of the comments on its phase one decision. And, and, and so I, I think there's going to be a time crunch there, both for the participants as well as for the ALJ. So would all of it um, mash into one thing for the Coastal Commission, or is that still going to be sort of like separate? I, I think it's separate. Uh, there's a possibility that the, uh, uh, the, the PUC proceeding will actually um, want to know where the Coastal Commission is going on this present application. Okay. In other words, will it be heard? Okay, thank you. Uh, any more questions from the committee members at this time before I open it up to the public? All right, Joel, open it up to the public for comment. Yeah, so if you would like to make public comment on this matter, please raise your hand. And at this time, I would like to invite Paul. Paul, when you're ready, please present your comment. Uh, thank you. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. This is Paul Bruno. I'd like to read a letter, a part of a letter, to the Board of Directors of the Monterey Peninsula Water Management District. A time is coming when the board will have to answer to the people of the community for most of them, it was never a question of growth or no growth, but a question of water supply. That is the basis for this board's existence. When they ask the questions, will you be ready to answer? You know, I'm looking at this letter. It's dated November 26th, 1990. That was 32 years ago that I wrote this letter. I, I was 13 years old when the district was formed. I was 26, year old, 26 years old when I wrote the letter. I now have a 29 year old son. We're talking about generations living in water poverty in our community. And this district is still considering standing in the way of solving a water, our water supply problem. The thought of standing in the way of solving the water supply problem is ludicrous. You know, you all know where I stand. I, I've been vocal over the years. You know, I believe that opposing these, especially the property, big mistake. But I'm afraid it's just going to be another mistake and a long list of mistakes and missed opportunities. So I'm going to urge you to support the desal project or to be neutral. Basically, don't force my children and grandchildren to live with your mistakes. This is a very serious problem. And to put all your eggs in one basket, to rely upon the seaside basin only, is a mistake. And I'm afraid that you're going to just continue to go down that path. So uh, you'll have to live with it. And unfortunately, I'm gonna to have to live with it as well, and so are my children. Thank you. Uh, your mic is uh, muted. Joel. At this time, I would like to invite John Tilly. John, when you're ready, please present your comment. Thank you, Joel. Thank you, everybody. I would like to echo the other two callers. And um, I've heard so often from people this placeholder, kick the can down the road term of we need All this, right. just not this D cell. Um, that isn't yeah. something that should be done by people with the responsibility that you have. This one's for you anyway. Okay. Quiet. Thanks. So, um, you know, what's really different these days versus the prior failures of this community to put a water supply in place is that we've actually been severely restricted to 3,371 acre feet off of the Carmel River. Uh, we have a really good idea that the Seaside Basin um, recharge is needed and at what level it's needed. Um, and my main point, though, is that 
this board should be concisely aware of what's happening in orbit pure water Monterey with the expansion. Uh, they should be concisely aware, very aware, and very shocked by the letter from the Water Resource Agency that points out the lack of source waters for the expansion of pure water Monterey. And if you're not aware of it, and if it's not being factored into your conversation, which it, I mean, really it's not, it hasn't come up once as a topic here today, and somebody on this board really needs to step up and show some leadership and, and really be willing to move away from the pack, uh, the pack of we need D cell, not this D cell. If this board, if this community does not step up and recognize that we have a wonderful opportunity in front of us to solve our water problems and recognize the depth of our water problems, um, then really, why are you on the water board? This, you know, it's really where the, this action is happening, uh, where it needs to be happening. Um, and instead, it's being done really with more of an eye on um, pretending like we do have sufficient water and a sustainable water system. You know, if you're really paying attention, you know that we don't. This, this community has kicked the can down the road so many times, but the, the road's a lot different right now. It ends with a cliff. You know, we're about to kick the can over the cliff and jump after it because we're headed to rationing. We all know that. And, and by not really focusing on whether Pure Water Monterey is going to be a success with the expansion, um, you're locking us into a very long term rationing uh, situation. I wish it was in place now so people would be aware of how desperate things are going to be and would be desperate for results. Show some leadership, understand the circumstances. We need desal, we need this project, figure out a way to get it done that makes it applicable to other goals as well. So please step up and show some leadership. Thank you very much. And at this time, I would like to invite John, uh, Adam, when you're ready, please present your comment. Thank you, just to uh, expand upon and, and follow up with uh, what's what's been said. Uh, I, I don't think it's appropriate to couch this as an either or decision. It's not a question of pure water or desalination. It, it is a question of both. We need thousands of new housing units uh, in the Monterey County and in the Peninsula region, region in particular. This is reflected in the RENA numbers. It is abundantly clear uh, that housing is going to be an ongoing need, uh, that the current water supply and the current recycled water, even with expansion, is simply not going to be adequate to meet. This is not an either or discussion. We need recycled water and I support the expansion of recycled water and, you know, and navigating all the issues uh, that there are with source waters, as John Tilly mentioned. Um, but in addition to that, it is necessary for us to pursue a, desal a desalination plant. And the reality is that the Calam desalination plant is the only one that is going to uh, be implemented in a timely fashion to meet our housing needs. So to put it quite simply, uh, opposing California Waters desalination plant is effectively telling working families and students and people with disabilities and people on fixed income that their housing availability and affordability issues don't matter. Please do not do this. As the previous speaker uh, mentioned, please either support the Calam desalination project or at the very least take no position uh, and let the and let this play its course. Thank you. And at this time I would like to invite Rick. Rick, when you're ready, please present your comment. Hi, thank you. Uh, my name is Rick Aldinger. I'm a resident of Monterey. A few days ago, I read the letter the Monterey County Water Resources Agency submitted to the CPUC. The letter outlined their concern that moving forward, there very likely isn't enough source water to support the pure water Monterey expansion. Uh, the very sources cited in M1 Waters presentation last week have been called into question in this letter. It further outlined just how tenuous the source water supplies are for the existing pure water project, let alone supplying water for an expansion, particularly during drought years. Uh, one point made states that uh, M1W's analysis of available water uses historic averages, which fail to account for the current drought conditions we are experiencing. Then this morning, I read a, re a release from the State, wa State Department of water resources acknowledging the current drought we're in, as well as accepting the likely reality of continued and worsening drought. The release states that 
Despite some rain recorded in parts of California in September, uncertainty remains about what the new water year may bring. Long range forecasting suggests warmer and drier than average conditions to persist. Uh, Department of Water Resources Director Carla Nemeth responded by saying, this is our new climate reality and we must adapt. As California transitions to a hotter, drier future, our extreme swings from wet and dry conditions will continue. So given this reality, it defies logic that this agency continues to ignore the need for a reliable drought-proof water supply for the residents you serve. An additional reality is that the Cal-Am project is the only project that is ready to go. Any new desal project would not be able to provide water to our residents for many years. And we are in a drought today. Please support the continued development of pure water. It should be used to its fullest capacity. But join Governor Newsom in acknowledging that desal is a necessary part of our water future. Thank you. Chair Edwards, I see no raised hands, so I'll return this back to the committee. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, uh, General Manager, Mr. Laredo, can y'all answer some of those questions? Or yeah, I think, want to with it? <laughs> yeah, I think let's be very general uh, in the response. Uh, and let's go threefold. Uh, one is we have not by any measurement failed to focus on water supply for the needs of the Monterey Peninsula. Uh, second, I'd like to say that there appears to be a fundamental misunderstanding of how the RENA numbers work, what RENA is, and what it is not. And I would be happy to host a workshop to kind of get people to understand RENA. These homes, these units, are first accounted for in the growth forecast in the district supply and demand study. It's not additive, it's not new, it's not scary. It's in the AMBAG growth forecast, which underpins the AMBAG 2045 study, which is uh, based on the growth forecast. They're all tied together. The regional housing needs determination is included in the long-term forecast. So it's not new housing, it's not scary housing, it's accommodated. The sixth cycle plan shows uh, Monterey County's total of about 20,295 housing units. The plan itself, the regional growth forecast includes 33,274 housing units. So the growth forecast and the supply and demand forecast that spins off the growth forecast actually has more housing units in it than the six cycle arena plan is requiring in Monterey County and in this portion of Monterey County. Finally, well, I, you know, I'd be more than happy to spend more time with people to help them understand that there's absolutely no expectation that all the housing units in the six cycle plan are to be built in the eight year period from 2023 to 2031. It's a planning exercise to remove barriers to housing during that eight year cycle. It's a zoning effort, it's a housing element effort in the general plans. It is not a building effort. If developers want to come in and do the building on a short cycle, God bless them, we get housing faster. But all of the planning that we're doing includes water for all of the housing and the timing at which that housing is likely to occur as stated by AMBAC. And then finally on the source waters, all we can do is reinforce that the base project, the Pure Water Monterey is performing as expected and the expansion has repeatedly been uh, defended as to where the source waters come from. It's no secret that the letter that was sent was voted to be sent by 
the three inland county supervisors and was rejected by the two county supervisors who actually live and have constituents in the project area. Purely a political letter has nothing to do with knowledge about engineering, source waters, or resource management. It's a gambit to further the objectives of the pro D cell contingent at the uh, cost to the Pure Water Monterey expansion. So, you know, let's call it what it is, but we are more than happy to walk people through. You know, Monterey One Water has experts too. They have engineers also, and they built a successful project in conjunction with our district, who, by the way, have engineers and experts. So let's not just assume away the knowledge bank of the two public agencies who've actually delivered water supply to this community in the last few years. I don't know if you'd like anything else from me, Chairman, but that's uh, that's kind of my summary. Uh, Mr. Laredo, any comment before we go? Well, uh, the one thing that comes to mind uh, the, the comments about rationing and statewide drought, we have to keep in mind that we're an island uh, in the sense that we don't rely on other areas for water supply. We are, for better or worse, solely dependent on our water supply. And as you get in your monthly uh, uh, board packets, what the status of that supply is, there's no need for rationing at this time in this area because of our water supply. Doesn't matter what the state does. Even if the state uh, wanted to ration, that wouldn't improve our water supply in one iota. You know, that's a great point, uh, Dave Laredo. So it wasn't until Saturday, meaning two days ago, that the Monterey Peninsula was actually in drought. A drought is defined statistically in our case here locally as two or more consecutive dry or critically dry years based on unimpaired stream flow measured uh, on the Carmel River. So all during this prior water year through the end of the water year on September 30th, we hadn't had two dry years in a row. And it wasn't until this last year finished um, on, on Friday that we officially here on the Monterey Peninsula can now call it a drought. We've had two dry or critically dry years in a row. So all of the hysteria over, and I've heard this, uh, a statewide drought, a multi-year drought, we're in you know, our uh, third year of a uh, multiple year drought. Not true. Um, you know, it's, it's a very good point to point out that we are isolated from Bay Delta issues. We're isolated from Sierra snowmelt issues. We're isolated from the state water project. And our Mediterranean climate, which granted only yields about 21 inches of rain a year, uh, most of the prognosticators say that there's no likelihood of less rain, but it may be more episodic, meaning you, you could still have your long-term averages. It may just happen in quicker, more intense uh, storms with greater uh, time periods between them. So we just don't know. but there is no evidence that we are at the front end of a permanent uh, climate ad adjustment, um, you know, frankly, so. Okay, well, we're gonna move along with this one and I'm gonna make a motion that, that uh, we allow staff to do a full environmental denial of Calam project. And I'll speak on the second. I'll second, but I also wanna speak. Okay, you can go first. <laughs> well, um, I, I want to just comment on some of the comments we're getting from others, um, and on 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 at the risk of sounding a little bit like um, uh, David Pendergrass, uh, I want to I want to say that historically, Calam has had the responsibility to provide a water supply. Uh, they failed in the, and then they were called out for not providing a water supply in 1995. Uh, and there was all sorts of discussions for several years ahead of that before they were called out. 
I'm, I just, I'm just surprised that the people who are so wedded to Calam's project, when Calam has not been able to deliver a project and they've had 20 some years of, 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 uh, of, of opportunity to do it. Not only that, they had an approved project, which was DSAL, which had three public part, uh, two public partners, a three-way partnership uh, back in 19 and in 2010. And Calam pulled the plug on that. I don't know all the reasons for it, but it was approved project by the PUC. Everything Calam had ever wanted was a PUC approved project for DSAL and Calam walked away. I am so sick of Calam's failure to deliver. And then when they did agree to add uh, 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 Pure Water Monterey as a component, the science there, the uh, state support around it, the funding for it, all moved that project along very fast. Two public agencies cooperated to, to make that partner, to make that happen. And then the expansion got into the same mix. My point is that two public agencies, this one and Monterey One, teamed up and provided an expanded water supply for the peninsula at less expense and a past faster rate with, a, with, with deadlines that are well uh, in our near future, when Calam failed to deliver. I don't understand all the people who continue to favor Calam when they have shown year after year after year an inability to, to provide water or an inability to implement a project that's even been approved. That's just my uh, David uh, <laughs> his, his, historical rant. Thank you. Thank you. I remember uh, Mayor Pendergrass a lot. We were on the board a long time together. Um, well, you well, all have a lot deep, deeper knowledge uh, of, of oh, this yeah, local but... history than, than I, but um, I do want to ask uh, Director Riley and probably others of you could answer this too. Um, the 2010 DSAL project, Public Private Partnership, one. Um, did it raise the environmental justice issues that the marina project does? I don't think, I don't, yeah, I don't think it did. No, no. But, but see, Marina Coast was a partner in that project. So right. they were getting a benefit from the project. And so there was no kind of ex expanded dimension to analysis at that side, of, at that, that, that uh, kind of interest or concern. Yeah, yeah. well, these things matter. But I'm not clear, uh, um, Director uh, or Chair Edwards, uh, what what you proposed, what you want staff to do on this. I mean, I, I could yeah. see potentially having a discussion on the board and the board making a statement on the, you know, the project that's coming soon before the Coastal Commission. Um, but I mean, what exactly do we do? You think we need from staff to have what that we discussion? need from staff is the uh, 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 the full environmental um study of this thing and telling us what what's not been changed or what's changed that's what i want i want them to talk to marina coast they got problems with this project um there's another public agency and one probably got problems i want them to talk to everybody and uh, water rights is a big thing on, on on this project that that marina coast is considered concerned about it's a lot wrong with this project that have not been changed since Cal Am pulled it off the table. They had some community meetings, great, but nobody showing up. We got a solution on the board. Go ahead, Karen. Well, well, we, uh, I mean, there's a lot of information about all these issues, of course, in the Coastal Commission record um, that we all have access to. So I guess my question is, uh, I don't want to burden staff with you know, sort of providing us with documents that we already have access to and information we already have. So I don't quite understand, you know, what what we need really need the staff to do on this. Yeah, Maybe I, I, I was gonna ask for clarification on the motion in a second because when uh, district council spoke, he talked about our authority over uh, approval of additions to the water supply um, which is different than an environmental scope. It's, uh, you know, we can have a variety of findings related to that incremental addition to the water supply 
and based on those findings recommend that the district not approve an amendment to the water distribution system permit for that supply but i don't think we're in a position to do any sort of environmental certification or review so i i'd like to suggest that you not think substantively not think about the a project but think about process at the moment there is a, an application before the Coastal Commission, um, and and uh, and it's appropriate to take a position with respect to that application that is going to be heard. If you want to take a look at the district's own per permitting authority, I'm concerned that we have a due process issue. Calam has a property interest in their system, and and you can't just come back in October and take a position on that due process issue without providing fair notice. And, and the, while the district does have permitting authority, uh, it can't exercise that without uh, allowing CalAM to be heard and, and doing that in a fair way. So uh, I think that uh, while this is taking a position opposing uh, desalination plant, I believe the only application that is uh, there before anyone at this point that is timely would be the Coastal Commission's application. We could also direct CalAM to, if it wishes to proceed with a desalination plant, that it will need to uh, come before this district for a permit to do so. Uh, but that's process, not substance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh Go ahead there, George. No, I, I, I just wanted to back up too and say, I thought it was a regulatory question we were trying to pursue as a, the rationale or finding the rationale in a regulatory uh, structure. And maybe that's process, uh, Dave, but, uh, or procedure. Uh, but I, I would like to see a narrowly focused um, statement as, as narrow as we can make it, but make it clear that we're opposing the project. I would just like to say just on the second that we're the water management district. And the general manager has been with his water supply and demand doing an outstanding job since what, 2019 or before when we started thinking about this. I, I think that this district needs to put its full weight behind its authority that we have. And especially with this project right here. So if, if the Coast Commission or, or, or CPUC have not heard us, uh, um, we at least did it 100% that we feel that our efforts are there. Uh, I'm not trying to cut off desal right now because I believe in a regional desal. I believe in helping Marina. I believe in helping uh, Salinas, those that are trying to stop us now. So that's my big problem that I got with this small project right here that's in somebody else's jurisdiction that, 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 that we're trying to get their water. They got arguments over there. They got problems over there that they're trying to say, why are we trying to take their water? So if I could, we got authority on the water management district to help stop it, make a better project, a better a regional project, I think that's what we ought to do. That's why I'm pushing this. Because this is the last hurrah on this one. If you get past, our rate pairs are going to be stuck with a big plant. And as so the are you Go suggesting ahead. we issue a, re you know, a resolution just um, stating our opposition to the, uh, to the desal plant to send to the Coastal Commission? Hey, 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 Director Paul, whatever the best route is, General Manager and General Counsel can tell me what is, <clears throat> tell us all what is the best route is. And is it, uh, 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 if it's denial, if it's a resolution, have it all ready for the 18th so the board can discuss it. Uh, Dave, your staff has your has his hand up. Yeah, I was going to ask John. Is that uh, you have something you want to add? Uh, yeah, I was just. I have the uh, technical answer to um, uh, Director Paul's question: Is what the difference between the two projects, and why was it not opposed before the uh, original project uh, had vertical wells that? Um, would induce seawater intrusion, but water, fresh water that came into the well fields had to stay in the Salinas Valley 
for their ordinance. So it was gonna supply the demand in Castorville and Marina. But now that the wells are slant wells, they'll pull in a lot less fresh water and the fresh water Castorville, but now, now the water extending out under um, what it, the Marina Coast position is a environmentally sensitive area where the previous project was not. Thank you, John. Thanks, John. Okay. Any more comments? If none, let's take a vote. Roll call, Com please. Committee member Riley. Aye. Aye. Committee member Pa. Epstein. Chair Edwards. Yes. The motion is adopted. Oh, you're playing it safe, but that's just <laughs> okay. So I'm I'm going to request that the motioner and the seconder. Uh, consider some amendments. I was trying to get in there before you voted, but um, I think what I'm hearing actually through Director Paul's suggestion is it would be a, a resolution uh, of non-support for the project based on several findings. Uh, those findings to be determined through the district council and the district's general manager to support that resolution. But the motion itself went out with a, a, a sentence or two about environmental review that I don't think would um, uh, can can be supported in a in a passage of such a resolution. So, you know, I, I think with the removal of the focus on environmental and changing it to a focus on a series of findings under the district law, uh, or that would support a position under the district law that we can bring it back then that way. I would support the modification in that direction. Okay, and uh, Mr. Laredo, from me, is that the strongest that we can do? I'm not trying to soft tap this. I, I'm concerned that we, we can make our action could be overly strong in some areas and that would leave us at a disadvantage. I believe that you can be very strong with respect to what's before the Coastal Commission. So I'll be working with Dave on that to make sure that we uh, toe that line. Okay, I'll, I'll support the secondary. Y'all come up with something for the 18th so the full board can discuss it and come out with. Okay, and then I would assume that uh, if we were to do a roll, roll call vote that the votes would be the same at this point? I, I, I would support um, consideration of a resolution stating the reasons why the board opposes the uh, uh, Calam's desal proposal before the Coastal Commission. So do we want to- Simp Simply stating Stating the reasons why we, you know, stating our opposition and, and reasons why. If we just but focused on that. I, I'm, I would... I'm, wor I'm worried about using our authority. If we're not going to use our authority to 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 a, a hundred percent, um, I'm, I'm I'm not going to go with a resolution. Resolution. I, I believe in using our authority. We're the water management district. We've been managing. So so well, so I don't I don't want to soft tap this chair. But, well, if we're going if we're going to um, uh, consider that, we have to consider uh, what our general counsel told us about notice and opportunity for notice to Calam and opportunity for Calam to be. Mr. Edwards, if I may, uh, go ahead. I, I I believe that your general manager can come back with these two approaches: one, the resolution for our position on the Coastal Commission application, and secondly spelling out what our regulatory authority is on it, asserting that we do have that regulatory authority and, and laying out that, that path as to how we will be exercising it. Okay, thank you. I, I, I can live with that. I give the full board a chance to hear both sides of it, but I'm not thank so you. happy I... this myself. You want a resolution? Yeah, I, think... I want to use the full authority. That's why we're the water management district. And people have been overlooking that. So yeah, I think I, I think what Dave Laredo just suggested covers all of the all of the concerns we've just been talking about. 
Good, and, good. And, and just my last comment is uh, mm -hmm. I hope we can put something before the full board that uh, seems workable for the Coastal Commission, not for beyond the Coastal Commission, because that's who we're trying to speak to right away. Yeah. As long as you using the full authority of the board, I'll go with you. But I'm not going to back off of it. We got to use our full authority. So All I right. think that the I think that the motion has changed somewhat. Right. So um, this question goes out to both Dave's. Uh, that sounds like Pacific Grove. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. why I usually turn off my uh, mic. <laughs> yes, uh, so my question goes out to both Daves. Um, will this just be general uh, direction or do we want to have a motion to uh, reconsider? And then once the motion to reconsider um, passes, then we can go back to the main motion and amend it. I don't know how we need to want to. I think that's at the discretion of the chair. Uh, okay. I think uh... what, whatever gets us there, <laughs> well, we can do both of those items. What's that motion will look like? I, I think we can take this upon general direction and we will okay. do something. If, and if we let our general counsel speak one more time, it's going to add four more pages to my work. So <laughs> it's, already, it's already doubled. So uh, yes, yes, I, yes. I want to, as, as, as much as he can get out of here. So, okay. General direction. Maybe you can divide it up. Yeah. Okay. Um, that item is closed now. Let's go to the next item, General Manager. Yeah, the next item is relatively straightforward. I'm going to let uh, District Engineer Maureen Hamilton uh, walk you through this request. Thanks. I'm <clears throat> requesting that the committee recommend that the Board of Directors approve a grant to the City of Monterey for project development costs associated with the Olivier Street stormwater diversion project. And also to authorize the general manager to enter into an agreement to reimburse the city up to $25,000 for that grant. The funds are budgeted this fiscal year and remain unallocated. Due to the timing of the project solicitation process for the IRWM grant and the fiscal year budgeting process, City of Monterey didn't have uh, project development costs in this year's fiscal budget. They plan to run with this project a little bit later. The alignment and easements and property rights uh, are going to dictate the schedule and the budget for this project. We'd like to get the project development going in order to make sure that this project fits within the grants cost and timing framework. Are there any questions? Any questions from directors? If not, one question. I thought this project and the other projects are the same projects. They, they are and the failure uh, to budget for uh, administration uh, could have, maybe should have been in the city of Monterey's fiscal year budget, but as Maureen's pointed out, there was no line item in that their adopted budget. And there was no specific line item in their IRWM grant request. And so it's a necessary piece that went unfunded. And so we find ourselves in a position where uh, we had put 50,000 extra dollars into the local projects budget uh, last board meeting, we approved the fire training uh, for 25,000, leaving 25,000 available. Um, I can tell you it's beginning to look like the other 106,000 will go unused also during the current fiscal year uh, because upon more digging, that budget item uh, was for a grant request that was extended twice through uh, April 31st of, or I'm sorry, April, yeah, 30th, February, March, April, yeah, 30th of, uh, of this year. And so as of right now, that uh, grant request is not even uh, current. So the, the money is there. Uh, 
it is the type of thing that we would have funded either through the grant or made available to make the project happen because the project will be uh, producing more potable water by getting that into the into the mix. So. Okay. Um, any other questions on this one? If not, Joel, open it up to the public. Yes, so if you would like to make public comment on this matter, please raise your hand or if you're calling in for star nine. Chair Edwards, I see no raised hands. Okay, can I have motion and a second? Move approval. Okay, move I'm approval. Second. And I'm a second. second from Director Paul. Okay, roll call vote, please. Committee member Pa. Yes. Committee member Riley. Aye. Chair Edwards. Yes. The motion is adopted. All right. What's our next item, Jim? Well, we're getting into discussion items. And before we get to item five, we're going to do uh, item four and a half. So uh, today, uh, through the mail from the EPA, we have received yet another recognition. I'll just hold that up there where you can see it. Oh, my. And this, this one is uh, actually calls out Marine Hamilton. Uh, there are two others um, to other parties. One is to Monterey One Water as an entity, but uh, Marine got singled out. And this is a certificate of excellence for Federal Facility Excellence in Site Reuse Award 2020. It took two years for the mail to get here, but nevertheless, 2020. And it's in recognition of your key role in developing, developing innovative cleanup initiatives to accelerate early cleanup, transfer, and reuse opportunities that became a catalyst for economic growth and community revitalization from the former Fort Ord, uh, the Federal Facilities Restoration and Reuse Office. And so basically what they're recognizing is uh, Maureen representing the district as project manager for all of the uh, pure water Monterey injection well uh, use had with it, um, you know, site reuse. And that's part of what Fort Ord wanted. You know, ASR was one of the earlier ones. John probably deserved a certificate like this as well, um, maybe eight years ago. Um, but nev nevertheless, the, the point is that they're recognizing that uh, the project is an innovative form of reuse of the Fort Ord properties. And so congratulations and thank you, Maureen, and thank you, uh, the EPA, and congratulations also to Monterey One Water. So how about them apples? All That's right, wonderful. And, I, and I know you're gonna bring that to the full board. Sure am, Maureen won't see this certificate for a few <laughs> weeks. No, we'll make would, you, right. would you mind, Maureen, if we put a little news clip on our website with a picture of the certificate? I wouldn't mind at all. I'm happy for it to say MPWMD was, it, for many years, it's been confusing as to who I actually work for. Um, well, I think this uh, is pretty much evidence they didn't yeah. know either. So. <laughs> That's wonderful. Yeah, and, but we'll, yeah, we'll, and Maureen, we'll get you your certificate. We'll take a picture of it so that we can uh, prepare at the board. And then Joel, I'll probably ask you to frame it, put it down on the table with all the other uh, baubles that we've earned lately. So moving on, item five is an update on ASR well number one and injection wells. Um, all I want to tell you at this point is we have our uh, what should be our last meet and confer. Uh, and I see that all the Calam public have logged off. Um, so <laughs> I guess oh. they won't be able to take that information forward. But um, we don't foresee that this needs to continue under discussion. We will, uh, we have that last meeting on October 17th, the day of the board meeting. Uh, so we'll have a little bit more that we'll report in closed session uh, that day. Um, and I believe, you know, our current view right now as a district is that the situation with ASR well number one is not a debilitating uh, physical impact to the ability of 
Calam to produce water at this point. So a little, little bit cryptic, but suffice to say that um, Maureen and John have uh, given me some work that gives me the comfort that uh, we're in a, a either a neutral or positive place at this point. And I'll take any questions on that. Okay, any questions? When you say neutral or positive place, you're referring to the ability to deliver the water. Uh, yep. That, that yeah. either we've uh, one for one offset it or actually maybe improved uh, the current physical limitations of the of the system. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Well, y'all take wherever necessary actions y'all need to take on it. So. Will do. And then the next item, item six, is an update on Pure Water Monterey expansion. I think uh, I think we know where we're at now. For those of you, yeah, and I, I laugh a little bit. So the proposed decision came out, you know, roughly 4:40 in the afternoon, Friday. On, to, on September 30th. Yeah. Yep. And within 20 minutes, I had 20 people ask me, "Well, what's it say?" And <laughs> like, I don't know. And yeah, in answering all the 20 people who answered, I haven't even been able to read the first two sentences, especially while I was driving in my car. And it's but, 76 pages long. And 76 pages long. And that didn't stop uh, the members of the fourth estate from calling this morning going, now that you've had it over the weekend, what's it say? Um, so we're still digesting it. Uh, Dave Laredo's office did a very good job of summarizing key uh, pieces of the decision, which I think he's made available to the full board, if not just uh, uh, chair, vice chair. But uh, so we're digesting it. Uh, we've, we've touched on a few things that we need clarity. You can't really put uh, extraction wells one and two into phase two and have a fully formed project. So we have to learn more as to what that's really about. There's some uh, mercury treatment questions that the ALJ has raised that I think we can answer quickly. But um, you know, we would be hesitant to green light uh, going out to bid if it's not a full project. And so you can't, you know, break pieces off and say, well, you're approved to move forward, but we'll approve those final little pieces later. I think also there's some concern that, you know, all three parties to the amended and restated water purchase agreement said, hey, if the PUC approves it, we will sign it. So we were all committed to do it. But there was one caveat by the company which dealt with cost recovery. Um, I can tell you it didn't say 100% of my wildest dreams in cost recovery are honored and therefore I'm as happy as can be. <laughs> It just said that cost recovery is authorized through rates and there is cost recovery in this decision authorized through rates. So I think everything points to an ability for all three parties to sign the amended and restated, restated water purchase agreement. But, you know, these are some things that we're going to have to sort out. And as uh, Mr. Laredo pointed out earlier, somebody could go through a uh, thorough exercise of uh, opposing this decision based on any number of reasons and submit that to the commission. Uh, it could change things. In the past, there's been what are called alternate decisions that have been offered up. Uh, so, and Dave, you're on uh, mute. Uh, just interjecting on the actual dates, the uh, comments on the proposed decision are due to be uh, lodged with the PUC by October 20. And then reply comments are due on October 25th. So uh, I'm certain that uh, there are some aspects of this that Cal Am is not going to feel warm and fuzzy about. So I would expect uh, that we will see comments um, and, uh, and we need to go through this carefully to see that are there things about which we need to comment as well. Okay, uh, are we gonna comment any on this cost that they throwing up? $30 million for two wells, $8 million for a, a half a mile pipeline that we were told probably cost $6 million. 
uh, you know, are we going to be able to talk about that? Or, or, or are we stuck with those numbers? Our practice has not been to try to duplicate the expertise of the uh, what was formerly the Office of Ratepayer Advocates, Cal Advocates, uh, and and we we do not have that level of expertise. Uh, uh, so I I don't know that we can come up with a uh, a technical. Well, I, I look at the ratepayers, and I look at what the Cal Am tell us. And then I look at what happened to us. That's why I'm pushing our full authority, if we have any, to use it. Because that pipeline, half a mile pipeline, eight, uh, $6 million now is $8 million something. Two wells, when we can drill one for $6 million, and they can, it cost them $15 million to draw, draw to, seven, seven, on, on, seven and a half on both of them. You know, I just, I just want to know. That's why I want to use our full authority on anything that we got. Because that's a water company over there, and we need to start acting like them. Any other comments before we move on? Um, just, ahead, for, just for clarification, maybe, Mr. Laredo, uh, but um, uh, there's public comment, whatever, the comment period for the parties, basically. I assume the public can also participate in that? Well, well certainly the public can comment and both to the uh, ALJ, but also to the commission itself. And then to the extent that uh, there may be some minor or major changes in the decision, the proposed decision, uh, does that just require more time at the PUC before it goes to the full commission? Not necessarily. Uh, the, 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 the decision that is voted upon by the commissioners may not even be seen by all parties or, or public until the day of the hearing. You mean day of the voting? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. I've seen, I've seen that happen. Yes. So. Sometimes if there's a, uh, an alternate decision that is really very different, they recirculate it for another round of public comment, but not always. Do you agree with that, Councilman? Oh, absolutely, yes. Yeah. It, it's, it, it, yeah. it could be a total surprise, and and this is a this is a matter for which there can be lobbying. So uh, individuals can go to one or more or all commissioners to uh, suggest language changes or wholesale uh, reversal of the position. So we have to keep in mind this is a draft proposed decision that may yet be altered. And it was and it was supported by all the parties who are expected to be signatories. So part parts of it. Oh, oh all right. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so there's a second item in here, which is uh, <clears throat> the letter to the PUC from the Monterey County Water Resources Agency. Yeah, um, I, I want to point out that this is symptomatic of a campaign uh, here, <laughs> and I'll, I'll call it a, a political campaign. It's an influence campaign, and there's been a series of letters, not just this one, but it started with the Hospitality Association letter, um, which, you know, Mark, I know you're on as a member, as a guest. I'm not going to single you out beyond to say that that letter and the letter from the Pebble Beach Company are both uh, two entities that are part of the Coalition of Peninsula Businesses, who are in fact an intervener with representation and have filed briefs and testimony through Bob McKenzie. So to have two members of that organization go off on their own and send letters, um, which is completely outside of the proceeding is tantamount to entering testimony on behalf of an intervener who's not an intervener. And it's, uh, it's very similar. And I've, I've already told a couple of you that you ever get an email and three minutes after you read it, you get a follow-up email that says that the sender wants to recall the email. You can't unsee what has been seen. So any 
of the commissioners or the ALJs or any of the folks on that very lengthy distribution list of any of these three letters have been subject to influence outside of the purview of the proceeding. And that's just unfortunate. It's, uh, it's a little bit of a, uh, a, a bad tactic. It's a little bit of what I would call cheating. Um, for the County Water Resources Agency to send that letter in after all filings other than the briefing period uh, is, you know, it's inappropriate. Um, so that's just the process. All of these were inappropriate letters designed to influence decision makers. And all of them contain incorrect information uh, more so the Pebble Beach letter and this uh, County Water Resources Agency letter. Monterey One Water is considering what response it can get in front of the participants in the proceeding, meaning commissioners, ALJs, and other, uh, uh, the applicant and the interveners, simply to correct the misinformation. I think that we in the community have some concerns that you know, one of our counterparts would sign it with the PE for pro professional engineer after his name, when in fact there are known errors in the assertions. Um, the fact that this was noticed under a threatened or uh, pending or threatened litigation may have been a Brown Act violation in the way it was noticed for the county supervisor's uh, agenda. There's been no threat of litigation, as we can see, over the source waters. The letter itself doesn't really appear to threaten litigation. So to have a, have a vote in closed session at the Board of Supervisors and using that veil of privacy to discuss it outside of the public's view uh, may have, in fact, been a Brown violation. So we're very concerned that it contains known false statements that are provably uh, false, alleged false statements that are a little more challenging to prove because people line up behind their experts and they say, well, my expert says this, so I believe them, and your expert says that, I don't believe that. Um, but very troubling. Uh, both, as I said, in terms of process and in terms of information presented and in terms of uh, how it all went down. So that's, that's my assessment on it. But I am told the factual nature will be addressed and uh, an attempt will be made to get that in the record because, you, you know, we have to combat these, uh, these, these games that get played that can bias the actual testimony that's already been given. Well, you know my saying, um, Mr. Laredo, GM and Fran, since I see you, what can we do? Can we do anything? If we can, we need to do it. Yeah, we, we had a, a sidebar discussion. Mm -hmm. um, well, I did with Paul and uh, a couple of other parties who will go nameless at this point. Um, because the letter was to Monterey One Water, it's really theirs to respond to. Well, I have uh, I have some other things that I, I want to talk to our to our council about um, whether it could be our role or is it not our role. Um, but I would be very curious to see all forms of communication between the company and employees of the county and the County Water Resources Agency. And I, I don't think that that's something to allow uh, a non-governmental organization or third-party organization to, uh, to request, and it might be something that our organization should request, but that's not fully formed at this point, and I need to have a sidebar conversation with council over doing so. But I, I am at the point where I would recommend that we do, as a district, a public uh, records act request to see if there is communication surrounding this particular letter uh, 
beyond just the office of the general manager of the County Water Resources Agency. Well, well Dave, aren't we back in this source water? We, are, we are. Are, are, we, are we guaranteeing um, our, 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 the district on these source waters? So y'all need to take whatever appropriate <laughs> action that needs to be taken and, and don't sit back on this one. This is from Direct Edwards now. We yeah, well, can't I, afford to sit back on any of this stuff anymore. Yeah, and I need to reaffirm nice. that, you know, we have entered into an agreement to sign a water purchase agreement that says if we don't deliver this incremental 2,250 acre feet per year, that we will be in breach and that there are penalties, financial penalties for being in breach. So eyes wide open, we as the district are saying we're going to deliver 2,250 acre feet. And on repeated occasions, we then turn to my counterpart at Monterey One Water and say, can you deliver the source waters needed to produce 2,250 acre feet? And every single time the answer has been yes. And every single time it has been under financial penalties for breach of contract, you don't enter into a 30 year agreement where you say, and I'm going to be in breach in year one, and then repeatedly year two, three, four, five, six through 30. So it's ludicrous for these outside parties to create doubt, simply to create doubt over the performance of, of a project, which frankly is just an add on to an existing project that's already performing. So, you know, we're comparing something that works to something that hasn't been proven to be buildable yet. And I, it's just, I, I'm living in a world that I, I can't fully grasp where, why would we enter into an agreement if we didn't feel we can deliver it? And the party that we've relied on to tell us, if we're in breach and we have financial penalties, guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna turn to that other party <laughs> who's next door to us and say, you repeatedly told us mm -hmm. the source waters were available. So now we're, you know, we're counter suing you. I mean, that's just the way legal agreements work. So none of us have gone into this naively. Yeah. And then, well, that... you know, here we are at the end game and then suddenly, oh, there's no water for this project. How could that be? We've only been looking at it for, you know, six years. Uh, On the other hand, Riley... Oh, I just I just want to say that the way I read some of these letters and the and the references that are made that they're in opposition to our position uh, is based on speculation. They don't offer any facts. They offer uh, we're going to continue in drought. We're not going to get any rain. Uh, we may not have a water source water. We may this. We may that. It's all speculation. And and I, I just I just appreciate very much this discussion and the transparency it is uh, in public. And I just think that's that's the, that's an enormous difference between us as a public agency with, I think, the integrity to, to discuss things in public uh, to the extent that we can. Uh, but still, we do. And many others do not even public. Yeah, agency. Well, so I just want to add that some of you may have, but certainly my staff has in the past heard me complain that a dentist and insurance salesman and a house painter for years have purported to know more about fish and steelhead trout than credentialed fisheries biologists who are employed by the district. And, and what we're seeing now is a loan officer, a commercial real estate person, a representative of the realtors, uh, a couple of uh, chambers of commerce executive directors apparently know more about source waters and water engineering than any of the experts who have credentials and work in this field. And, you know, I apologize to those who are on the line and that have heard that. Um, I love our chambers. I love going to chamber events. I love supporting the chambers. No free lunches anymore. We've supported <laughs> M MCAR. You know, we do seminars to their government affairs mm -hmm. committees, mm -hmm. but we are doing nothing but looking for a permanent water supply that meets the needs, the growth needs of this Monterey Peninsula, the same thing everyone's asking to be done, which is get us water so we can 
get out from under the moratorium, get out from under the CDO and pursue our dreams. And for anyone to conjecture that we're not doing that is just small minded. So, if, if I may, Dave, I just want to. I did spend considerable hours looking through the 76 pages, and I can tell you that um, although Cal M originally said there was no CEQA involved with this project, uh, some of our public agencies did say, you know, it is a project under CEQA, and there is an extensive discussion of CEQA and the uh, proposed decision finds that there are um, overriding considerations, and this is exactly what the SEIR did for the expansion of Pure Water Monterey and um, for public health and safety. So if this proposed decision is adopted, it is in effect agreeing that the uh, environmental evaluation that included all of the source water discussion for volumes and volumes and volumes of comments they concur with, and that should put the issue to rest. Now, yeah. that's not to say that an argument could be made, well, there's new information, particularly with some of the new source waters. But the reality is they were described and discussed and approved under the SEIR <laughs> pro proposed decision if it is approved by the full commission acknowledges that. And so perhaps we can finally put it to rest, but I would direct your attention to those pages in the proposed decision um, that speak to the environmental review that was for the source waters and the expansion of pure water Monterey. Thank you. Great, that's very helpful. Isn't there, isn't there a, a finding in the proposed decision that uh, saying that um, the source waters are adequate. It's a finding on the CEQA analysis that um, that they make that they agree with the overriding uh, considerations for public health and safety, which goes back to the complaint that we filed back in was it May of last year, where we said there isn't adequate water and Calam needs to file an application that ultimately resulted in them filing this application that we now have a proposed decision on the first phase. So the saga continues. <clears throat> um, okay, if any, no other questions. Uh, Joel, let's open it up to the public on those items that we discussed, I think five and six. And that's, that's, that's correct. That's correct. So if you would like to make public comment on item number five or six, please raise your hand or if you're calling in, push star nine. Chair Edwards, I see no raised hands. Okay. Any more discussion from committee members? Okay, go, George, go ahead. Uh, I just want to say, Dave, at the, at the um, risk of Irritating you a little bit. <laughs> I'm already I'm already hot today, right? I came in hot. <laughs> no, I, I just want to say that I'm very impressed with uh, the staff contributions beyond Dave uh, today. I thought Maureen uh, the the award was that, and she got recognized. But I want to I just want to recognize John Lear for jumping in and, and getting getting an answer to a question that was raised by one of the board members, and an unremarked so far. But I want to I want to compliment Joel for jumping in and trying to figure out an angle on clarifying the motion. And I just thought those volunteer comments were good. The reason I might irritate Dave is I may be encouraging more staff uh, rebellion than than I than I want. That's not, that's not my intention. It's just to get the information we need and, and move forward. Thank you. No, we have we have very good staff, unsung often. Um, I do want to point out that part of that you know that certificate to Maureen was on the uh, early cleanup, and I want to. On the record that we didn't we've never blown anything up so we've never assisted in the cleanup by actually finding unexploded ordnance and then you know tripping it but john was out there one time i think this predates you marine and they they stopped work because here was this potential unexploded piece of ordnance and it turned out to be like the head gasket of a like a 1950s chrysler or something like that but uh 
yeah, I don't think we've ever found any unexploded ordnance in our area. It was pretty, it was clean pretty well, but uh, just luckily the early cleanup has not, you know, resulted in anything that we're embarrassed about. And and, and Dave, from me, just for good or or the order, could you check your calendar to do a supply and demand for the city of Seaside? <laughs> before the uh, you mean a city council uh, presentation? Yeah, for the city I'd love of, to. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Tell tell it like you did Del Rio Oaks. So they know what's what the, their problems or or what they got to do. And um I appreciate that. Sure. Yeah. Um any other questions? Good job, Fran and Dave, for, for getting that water purchase agreement and getting it out to the public as fast as y'all did. I appreciate that. So anything else? Meeting adjourned. Thank you. All Thank right. you all. Bye -bye.